Boop, boop, boop. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is overjoyed about his latest detention sentence. You know I'm the only kid on America's Most Wanted? No, but I'm not surprised. Kelly wants to know who has dates for her birthday party Saturday. Zach lays claim to his girlfriend's flesh, then gloats about Kelly to Slater. Belding's niece Penny is in town, and he wants someone to take her out on Friday. What'd she look like? Zach forgot Kelly exists. Belding notes, this is Zach's ninth detention. Zach swears it's eight. Number eight was when you sold the school to the Japanese. I remain not surprised. One more detention, and and Zach will be suspended. Not until cows give Pepsi, sir. He's only so smug because he's so dumb. Zach, who should be on his best behavior, shows up late to class chewing gum, then flagrantly passes notes, and gets caught twice. Detention. Guess cows are giving Pepsi sooner than you thought, Zach. Belding offers to make detention disappear if Zach will take out Penny. That's blackmail. Yeah, who do you think he learned it from? Zach laments, wasting his Friday on a date with a Belding, giving no regard to Kelly, who he now has plans to cheat on. Kelly checks on Zach as he looks shittier than usual. Zach says he'll be fine by her party Saturday. Kelly reports the Max was booked. The party's moved to Friday. Guess there's only one thing Zach can do fake every injury at the same time. He suffered a nasty skateboard accident. His doctor said, No dating. I'd like to see his medical license. Belding reminds Zach he used skateboard accident for midterms. He reinstates Zach's suspension, miraculously healing him. Belding tells Zach to meet Penny at the mall and to carry a red rose so she'll recognize him. The only way she'll recognize him. This gives Zach a great idea. Zach enlists Screech to free him from his latest self-made prison. I'm gonna do you a favor. Last time you did me a favor, I I ended up naked on a bus. Someone, anyone, investigate this man. Zack tells Screech he needs to pretend to be Zack and go out with Penny. He breaks Screech's self-esteem by making him look in the mirror to acknowledge his dating desperation, then says stop touching. But Zack's blabbering has once again allowed his plans to be overheard where people wipe their ass. By Slater, who he just provoked, Zack's giving Screech a crash course in being a sociopathic douche. Despite the fact that all Penny knows about Zack is a rose, his delusional narcissism deems all this necessary. Screech, trying to keep up with Zack's unholy curriculum, falls down the stairs. Screech tells Kelly he can't make it to her party since he has a hot date at the movies. Slater says he can come to the party after the movie because Screech shouldn't miss out on life to do Zack's bidding. Zack taunts Slater for not having a date, then says nothing could ruin this night. About that. Screech arrives with Penny, looking like a bargain bin dick tip. Penny's sweet and likes Screech, regardless of his piss poor personality. Zack yanks him away from the date he set up. He yells at Screech for showing face at their friend's party, then threatens him with violence violence if he refuses to leave. But Screech, deep in character, disregards and disrespects his buddy. He's a dweeb. Full Method Morris. Slater, antagonized once again, introduces Penny to Kelly in hopes of shining a light on the sewer scum Zack is. Penny tells Kelly she's having a great date with Zack Morris, and they're leaving soon to go get hot and heavy. Kelly is pissed the fuck off at this bitch showing up to her birthday talking about getting busy with her man. Penny's afraid she's about to get her ass kicked. They leave. Kelly demands answers. Would you believe we're on totally hidden videos? No, because that's not a real show. Zack, forced to tell the truth, admits he put Screech up to the fraud. Kelly should be furious he accepted a date with another girl, but appreciates the trouble that went into his ass-saving con? No! Kelly, no! He's got you brainwashed, sweet Kelly. And we never see Penny Belding ever again. After learning she was a pawn in a cruel game and dating an imposter, she probably fucking killed herself. Let's review. Zack Morris was lucky enough to have a date with Kelly for her birthday that he forgot about at the mention of another woman. When warned, he was on the cusp of suspension, got busted for the same offense twice in two minutes, instead of taking his punishment, took a date to bail himself out, and would have been fined secretly cheating until it was physically impossible. So he cloned himself, after revealing his scheme to the person he's been picking on, resulting in his double cheating on his girlfriend at her birthday party, and learned nothing. Because Kelly is an angel with infinite compassion he does not deserve. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris made Tori late to the class ring meeting to feel her up. Belding opens the floor for suggestions. Ox has a good one. Zach insults him. It actually makes sense. 
Did you have brain surgery over the weekend? Then volunteers to be in charge of procuring the rings, promising he'll get a great deal. Tori, confused why Lisa is so mean to Screech, wants to see a movie with him to show he's really not that bad. Zach's using his ring roll to rip off students. Tori interrupts. Zach tries to hustle her. Don't worry, you're my girlfriend. You'll get a great discount. No, moron. Tori's checking if it's alright to see a movie with Screech. Zach laughs as he does not take Screech seriously, then goes back to scamming. Screech agrees to the movie date after checking if Zach's cool with it. What a friend. Tori and Screech are having a nice time. Zack hawks over them. Tori reacts to Screech's spicy popcorn. Zack delights in her apparent discomfort. But even when Screech pulls out his pet rodent, Tori keeps her composure. Hey, where are Zack's rings coming from? This slime ball. Slater is shocked. He is so clearly a slime ball. Trust me. I do not feel better. I'm Zack Morris. You must be Mr. Diamond. Mr. Diamond? You'd have to be a real dum dum to trust this guy. Zack trusts this guy and is dazzled by a briefcase of spring loaded dismembered hands draped in costume jewelry. Mr. Diamond pulls the oldest hustle. Oh, 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 you don't want this one. But Zack says it looks good. That's the problem. It's so good he loses money every time he sells it. This con makes no sense. That's what I want. Zack threatens to walk when Mr. Diamond quotes him a price that he then rotates to give him a bargain. Zack sees nothing suspicious about this sales pitch and pricing structure, then cuts a side deal. I want my ring for free. Zack proclaims he bested that greasy shade master. Screech, perpetually told by Zack to be someone else, is in love with Tori, who accepts him as is. Tori tries to let him down gently, but Screech, who has been through Zack's bullshit romance hurricane too many times to count, vows to try and make it work. Zack struts in with 300 rings that Grifter cranked out overnight. Slater is skeptical of their quality. Zack, instead of checking on how Tori's doing, goofs on her entanglement with Screech, then makes her beg for his help. Zack lays a guilt trap. He has Slater tell Screech Zack's depressed about Tori. Screech asks how he can help, because he cares about Zack. Zack says stop seeing Tori. But Screech, so close to graduation, is done putting Zack's happiness above his own. Screech gives Tori his ring to show his affection. Zack gives her the news his latest shitty plan failed. Lisa is enraged. Zack's gold ring left a green stain. Zack doesn't understand, because he is stupid. Lisa explains, he got hoodwinked. Is it just Lisa's ring? Nope. It's every ring. Zack calls his buddy, who becomes hostile as Zack Wine accuses him of ripping off his whole class. Because that was Zack's plan. He gets laughed at and hung up on. Zack, who just lost $20,000 on phony rings, is running out of options to escape the consequences of his atrocious judgment. Suddenly, Zack gets a great idea. He needs Tori to manipulate Screech and get him fired up. Tori shows Screech her green mark and infuriates him by saying the symbol of their love is a fraud and he needs to teach Mr. Diamond a lesson. Zack Zack calls Mr. Diamond to say he likes his style, and wants to be his sleazy sidekick slinging students fake stones. And Slater? He's the muscle. Enter Screech, who is ready to defend Tori's honor with his own life. Zack and Slater take turns trying to stop him and pretending to get knocked out. Screech, falsely thinking he can fight, demands real rings. Which, thank God, works. Because the kind of guy who steals 20 grand from minors probably carries a weapon and isn't afraid to use it. Zack got the rings, including a freebie for himself, and got Screech the attention of girls who like him for or who he is not, and will certainly push him to get in fights he'll lose. Let's review. Zack Morris offered to buy rings for his classmates just to rip them off. Then Zack got ripped off by a clear-as-day con man, and was too dull to understand it happened even as it was being explained to him. After losing nearly $20,000 on counterfeit jewelry, made his girlfriend exploit his best friend to attack the man who robbed him. A thief who fortunately did not fight back, as he would have been well within his rights to fight for his life in self-defense, and left Screech with a reputation he cannot live up to and will get him beat up. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. And now, the long-haired businessman. I can give you a week or two to digest these numbers. Yeah, I'm gonna you're gonna need this actually, is guys, uh, guys, to I digest. hate to interrupt, we got a bit of a code red situation. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, right. guys, guys, your attention, it's code red, okay? Code no red. time Everybody to be up. Guys, no guys, guys. Be this is not up. a drill, all right? This is gonna this is go, we drill, gotta get okay? going right now. Let's go, let's, let's go, play. come on. Leave everything, follow. Zach Morris is trash. Kelly bothers Zach with the drink he ordered. She wonders about life after graduation. Hopefully I'll be at college 
living in a sorority house. Zach once again mistaking any building with women for a brothel. Screech bought Lisa a gift in a final push to win her heart before school ends. Everyone politely explains. At this point, he should give up. Everyone but Zach. Don't listen to them. If you like Lisa, go for it. Don't give it up. The recruiter from Lisa's dream fashion college is flying in. She needs to impress her. Zach suggests a fashion show. What's his angle? And how will Lisa pull it off? Oh, I'll help you. The Zach Morris kiss of death. Screech gives Lisa her gift. It's real gold with something special inside. Zach allocates all the sewing manual labor to the ladies. Him and Slater will find a venue for the show and uh, handle other details. Interview the models. So that's his angle. Lisa needs this to go well as her entire future hangs on this event. Zach booked the Max to host Lisa's show. You know, that place they've had fucking everything for years. Great work, lot of hustle. He also booked Screech as the announcer. Lisa objects. Screech doesn't know fashion. I'll be writing everything he's gonna say. Trust me. Lisa, please, think about what you're going to say next. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Lisa's working on designs, like this magic eye shirt. Stare long enough and you see a douchebag. Zach lies and says these ugly clothes are very good. And don't forget him when she's famous. I can never forget you, Zach. I hear that, sister. But when Lisa goes in for a goodnight hug, Zach makes a beeline for Smooch City, then says nothing, leaving her confused when she needs to focus. Lisa thinks the kiss was just a clumsy mistake. Jesse says premeditated is Zach's middle name. Jesse breaks the news to Kelly, who giggles that her blonde problem is now someone else's. Lisa doesn't think Zach was coming on to her, overlooking his incessant trust me language and egregious flattery. Zach's in a robe, telling women to smile. This can't end well. Lisa's nervous at showtime. Zach says the word every woman loves to hear. Relax. Which does not work. Zach decides now is the perfect moment to talk about last night. Zach's mumbling, maybe it's time they take things to a handjob level. When Lisa says the kiss was nice, but more importantly, thanks for helping with the show. I love working for you. Not proper employee conduct. Zach makes a move, knowing Screech is here and could see them. Screech sees them and is obliterated. Zach's wearing Lisa's pants that are fortunately equipped with erection hiding fabric walls. Lisa greets the recruiter and hands it over to Screech, who is in emotional apocalypse. Screech takes out his heartache on Lisa's designs, airing his misery for everyone to hear. Zach goes off script to yell at Screech for going off script. Thank you, Zach, for destroying my life. I hear that, sister. The show's ruined because Zach decided to get horny during what should have just been a conversation. But despite Zach's best efforts to demolish Lisa's future, her clothes won over the recruiter. Jesse found Screech's note for Lisa. It's a beautiful letter of love and good luck. Zach, to make himself feel better, goes to find Screech. He corners him. Screech asks for space. Zach does not oblige. Screech distances himself. Zach selfishly follows, then makes this great excuse. I didn't even know what was happening. He never accepts responsibility or says sorry. Screech, shattered, wants to fight Zach after school. Knowing he He'll lose, because that's the only kind of shit Zack's primal caveman mind understands. Zack scoffs at Screech and enjoys that he drove him insane. Guess that kiss really shook him up. Lisa's trying to talk about their developing complicated relationship. Zack makes a not so subtle pitch for boning. It feels good inside. Zack tries to back out of the fight. That's fully his fault. Screech labels him a coward. Accurate. Slater intervenes, but Screech is out of his mind and in the kind of pain where it might be nice to get your ass beat just to feel anything. Zack diffuses things by screaming. Scream apologizing. Sorry, I hurt you, all right? Scream apologizing is not a thing. Screech exposes Zack for knowingly picking Lisa of all girls, then exposes one of his stupid titties. Zack says if he knew it would bother him, he wouldn't go out with her, a conclusion he could have come to earlier. Lisa does what she should have done years ago. She stops being mean and gets honest. They'll never be an item, but her and Zack like each other. Screech puts his anguish aside to be the bigger man and gives their blossoming romance his blessing. Except that's the last we hear or see of Zack and Lisa dating, ever. Seriously, are you fucking kidding me? Let's review. Zack Morris saw his best friend hopelessly in love with Lisa for years. Instead of telling him to move on, told him to keep going, then offered to help with Lisa's show just to prey on models. When there were no models, he preyed on Lisa, then sexually targeted her at her most vulnerable and broke his buddy's heart into a million pieces, with no regard for how this might impact the show and Lisa's chances at college. Instead of giving him space or apologizing, pestered Screech with non-excuses that pushed him deeper into rage-fueled insanity, then used Lisa to force Screech into accepting the relationship he had no intention of seriously pursuing. So all of Screech's pain was for nothing. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash! Just relax and enjoy the sounds, everybody. What is this?
This is Funny or Die TV. Boop, boop, boop. Zach Morris is trash. Zach and Tori are Bayside's hottest new couple, as seen in these awkward photos certainly commissioned and distributed by Zach. The mini golf team had budget cuts. The football team had cuts too. Zach refuses to cut his bullshit. At least you guys have uniforms. We don't have anything to wear for field hockey. Really? I'll have to check out your next game. Tori transferred to shop, a class she loves. From home ec, a class she hates. Zach thought she loved home ec, both because she is a woman and he never listens. Building somberly reports, a wealthy alumnus, Frederick Field, passed away and left $10,000 to the students in his will. Zach instantly has a plan to dishonor his memory. I say we rent out the form, have a private party with the Laker girls. A plan he retracts after remembering Tori exists and has ears. The will stipulates the donation must benefit Bayside. Zach proposes improving to the underfunded sports programs, like a dome to cover the baseball field that costs $990,000 more dollars than they have. Tori thinks some non-idiotic improvements to the sports team sound great. I mean, all of our teams are in financial need. Zach says not so fast. Are you saying that girl sports don't count? G girl sports count, just not enough to get money. Provoking a gender war on Fred Field's dime before his cold corpse is in the ground. Building funnels the riotous energy Zach unleashed into a best two out of three battle of the sexes. With fashion inspo from the local Palisades chapter, of the Crips and Bloods. The winning team gets the $10,000 presented at a dance on Friday. First up, solving a rebus puzzle. Zach has an unfair advantage, as reading pictures like whole words is the sweet spot of his mental potential. Zach gloats over his subliteracy. Challenge two, reassembling a car part. Zach puts all the pressure on Slater, then loudly disparages the ladies. Those girls couldn't even pump their own gas. <laughs> Zach can't fathom his mechanic girlfriend knows enough about cars to win. Round three, a bake-off determines the victor. Zach has a cunning strategy to win cheat his balls into next Thursday. Zach replaced their oven with a trick knob to burn their cake, with zero consideration towards the possibility of burning the school down. They win. Zach loudly celebrates his fraud, leaving Lisa with an inexplicable culinary failure that will haunt her self-esteem for life. Because Zach is so bad at crime, he gave Screech the only evidence that could convict him and failed to mention he should not take it directly to the girls and blab about their plot. Tori wants to teach Zach a lesson. Yeah, best of luck, Tori. Zach's been working tirelessly to guarantee the girls don't see a Penny. And Screech, sponge of Zach's sadness, only got $5 for his team despite doing all the dirty work. Meanwhile, every guy at Bayside is getting the cold shoulder from every girl, including Zach, about time. Lisa and Tori say they know Zach cheated. Despite being caught red-handed, Zach lies to Tori's face at the infancy of their relationship over Mr. Field's dead body. Until Zach confesses, no guy is going to the dance with any girl. Zach lies to a horde of teenage dudes that slightly newer football jerseys are more important than ever having sex. Then guilts Lisa and Tori for ruining one of their last high school dances by holding him accountable to his fiery deception. But all it takes is Tori touching Zach's tie to completely eradicate his convictions. He tries to quietly admit to his sham, but is begrudgingly forced to do it at a volume people can hear. Zach can't believe he's saying this, but his hard-on won't allow him to cheat those women out of a dead guy's charity. Guess the death of a loved one really makes you grow up fast. Tori, who has integrity, says the girls won't accept the money until there's a tiebreaker. So they limbo for it. Freddie Field would've loved this shit. Probably. Who cares? Tori wins because unlike Zach, she has a backbone, and she's sharing the cash with the guys, something Zach never would have done. Let's review. Zach Morris took a stranger's charitable dying wish and turned it into a gender war set on depriving his peers, a war he'd rather die in a fire than win fairly. When his shoddy con was discovered, like it always is, he made everyone suffer to prove a point he stopped believing after one second of horniness, because Zach Morris never gave one damn about Fred Field or anyone else at Bayside. He only cared about himself. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash. Ears to the ground, noses in your business. FOD TV BC News. I'm a beefy little boy. You're watching Funny or Die TV. Zach Morris is trash. The gang's at the mall buying U2 tickets. To cut the line, Zach Morris left Screech alone, defenseless overnight on the cold floor. Zach slaps Screech awake, then says he's going for a sleazy stroll. He orders Screech to handle the menial task he refuses to help with. But Screech fears buying seats in the wrong section will result in Zach's violent punishment. He forfeits his spot to ask Zach a question that would have been easily answered if he hadn't left. Screech sees Zach's anger and proactively slaps himself to save his tormentor the trouble. Zach says get back in line and threatens murder. If we miss out on this concert, I'm gonna kill you. 
you. Where's Lisa? She's at the shoe store flirting with the salesman. He's taking Polaroids of her feet. The only man in the mall creepier than Zach. Lisa, back from the photographer, finds $5,000 in cash. Zach calls dibs on the mystery money. Kelly, divine spirit, notes that belongs to someone. They should turn it in. Zach says can it, then tries to claim it all. When this immediately leads to fighting, Zach realizes the fair thing to do. Steal the money temporarily. Buy $5,000 of U2 tickets. Scalp them, split the profits, and return the cash to this bench. What could go wrong? Two jacketed goons from the mafia looking for their loot. That's what? To skip the line, Zach prostitutes himself and everyone he knows. When a sweet old lady isn't buying his lies, he goes with a $200 bribe. Oops. Nice one, dingus. Kelly pushes to turn in the money before another brilliant idea makes the pile dwindle further. Zach, bloodless monster, shows no remorse. Who cares? <laughs> it's not our money. The mall announces a second U2 concert on sale tomorrow morning, giving Zach a fresh opportunity to squander with his passion for sloppy avarice. Zach concludes the only way to buy tickets is to stay at the mall until closing, then sleep there. Because he doesn't understand how money works, Zach says they can spend their profit before they make it. He throws cash around like a broken ATM, drawing the goon's attention. Zach hides the rest of the money in a shoebox, the least secure type of box that exists. Kelly and Lisa are terrified, being chased by the criminals they evidently robbed. Zach hushes their fears to talk loudly over a movie. What an asshole. When the thugs show up, Zack says calmly leave one at a time. He volunteers himself to escape first to safety. Instead of calling security, Zack says call your parents to lie about where you're sleeping so they can spend the night in a sporting goods store, felony trespassing, using a nylon tent to shield themselves from their attackers. After a cramped slumber party, which you just know involved unwanted touching, Zack attempts to buy as many tickets as possible and dick over everyone else in line. One little problem. The money is gone! Zack's scheme to hide the money in a shoebox then send Lisa to a store filled with shoeboxes somehow fell apart. They ransacked the place. Zack is prepared to punch that old lady in her ass for touching the one box he didn't destroy. They find the cash, enter crooks, and Zack does an evasive jump for freedom. Instead of leaving this mall of murder, Zack has everyone hide in a window, wearing costly clothes they have no intention of buying. They finally listen to Kelly and confess, but the security guard says he's working with the goons. Zack tries to flee like a coward while his friends beg for their lives. Turns out they're not made men. This was all a hidden video prank show, and Zack's deplorable hijinks will make great TV for perverted sickos. They're rewarded with front row tickets to U2 that Zack instantly suggests selling. Let's review. Zack Morris tried to buy tickets to a U2 concert. Zack Morris is trash. Zack Morris is trash.